guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale with something a little bit different. Gonna be a quick video, guys. I've been playing this game since beta. Since before beta, really. And I know a lot of you guys are old school as well. And a lot of you guys are somewhat newer, right? Now, whether you're new or you're old school like me, I hope this video will serve as kind of a refresher course, a reminder on some best practices for Clash Royale. But we're gonna get a little bit more in depth than just, you know, keep track of your opponent's cycle and learn how to count elixir stuff that we talk about in every single video don't play too aggressively offensively we're going to talk about more broad concepts in some cases and more specific concepts in other cases that should help a lot of you guys out i've made a lot of mistakes when playing this game and if you're anything like me guys you're not trying to be a pro player i am not trying to go you know to partake, partake in crl and live in a team house and play year round as a professional player all I'm trying to do here is have fun and feel like I'm improving and that is the goal that is the whole genesis of this YouTube channel to allow you guys to have fun and feel like you're getting better at the same time so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get into the the mistakes I guess or or the tips however you want to look at them glass half full glass half empty either way we got you covered here tip number one is gonna be card upgrades man I was the worst at upgrading my cards early on in this game. I would watch YouTube, I would see a pro playing a deck, and I would take the deck, and without even playing three matches with it, I would already start upgrading the cards. Okay, oh, this guy's using Expo. He, he, oh, he's so good with Expo. I'm gonna play the Expo deck. I'm gonna upgrade my Expo. And then I would suck at the deck, and I'd be wasting my gold on the Expo. Even as somebody like me, who did spend money on the game, I would still be wasting my gold on the Expo, a card that I really never wanted to play play once I actually realized what decks suit my you know my strengths as a player so what I would do in hindsight is this what I would recommend for you guys is this right focus on your win condition that's a no-brainer right and obviously a, a common or rare condition is generally better because you can request them more often so for me early on I liked hog rider I would suggest you guys uh, if you let's just say you like hog rider too I would request Hog Riders, I would focus and save my gold for Hog Rider upgrades, and then really importantly, I would try to complement my Hog Rider decks using cards that are less level dependent. Now that's really important. I mean, a lot of cards have been added to the game and all, already some existed that are not so level dependent as other cards, such as Skeleton, such as Tombstone, such as Tornado. I would definitely have Tornado in the deck because the level isn't that important. And then those less level dependent cards, I would not set them as a high priority to upgrade. Instead, I would focus on my spells and my win condition, and then just kind of upgrade that one deck from there. Instead of upgrading, spending my gold and wasting my gold on every card out there in the game, I think that's a much better strategy. I actually put out a video, the top 10 least level dependent cards, which I will link in the description in the show notes for you guys, in case you want to check out those cards that are less level dependent as other cards. Mistake number two is going to be, ooh, how to get better at the game. That's a very broad, broad topic, but how to watch replays and how to... How to best learn, just learn a deck. And for me, and this is what led me to create the YouTube channel, for or, or to, to kind of shift directions in the YouTube channel. Some of you, a few of you, right, might remember me at the beginning of Clash Royale. I'm talking like beta area and a little bit afterwards. I had no idea what I was doing in terms of content. I was just doing Let's Plays every video and sometimes I wasn't making any sense. Maybe that hasn't changed too much. But then it, it took me a while to realize that, you know what, the best way for me to get better is to watch a pro player or a very good player playing a deck that I want to get better at and, and not paying attention to chat if you're watching on Twitch not paying attention to even necessarily what the player is saying all the time but instead just watching the decision making process on that player now that we have CRL that would be the best because you know those pros are focused and they're not making as many mistakes as they would in say in a stream or in a YouTube video with uh, you know a, a mediocre YouTube host 
uh, chirping in their ear the whole time as they play live, right? So that would be something that I would I would recommend you guys watch a player who's really good on YouTube or wherever and try to learn from them, try to mimic their decision making. But more importantly than that, even it's watching your replays after a loss, and that's something we talked about a lot here on the channel. But more specifically, this is what you should look for. You don't have to watch every lost replay. Who wants to do that? That would be really boring and, and make for a very tedious evening, right? Or whatever, or a bathroom trip, wherever you play Clash Royale, right? So what you want to do is, if you get absolutely slaughtered and you don't know exactly what went wrong, first of all, you're probably in a little bit of a bad mood. You're probably tilting a little bit, right? And it's tough, and the, the inclination, human nature, is to want to hop right into a next match and try to forget the hell that ever happened, right? But you don't want to do that. What you want to do is watch the replay, grin and bear it, watch the replay, and identify where things started to unravel. What was the turning point in the match? And then, unfortunately, there's no rewind button, but you wanna watch the replay again. And then look at the moves that led up to that breaking point, and then kind of track maybe the five, the three, four, five, six moves that you made before that and what you could have played differently. Maybe the correct card was not in cycle, and then try to fix your mistake moving forward. I mean, that's as easy as that to improve this game. Mistake number three for me, and we touched on this a little bit in mistake number one, but it was switching decks way too frequently. I would not give decks a try. I mean, I would give them a try for a few matches, and then I would lose. You know, maybe I lost my first two matches. Maybe I lost my first three matches. Maybe I lost three out of my first four matches. It doesn't matter. But I would say, oh, this deck sucks, or this deck is not for me, and that would be it, you know? To get better at a deck, you really have to get, you know, at least 20 matches under your belt to, to really feel the power of the deck. And it's way too anecdotal and circumstantial to say that, oh, I won three matches, this deck is OP, it's awesome. Or I lost three matches and this deck sucks, or it's not the deck for me. I would switch decks all the time. I would go on TV Real and I would copy a deck and try it. Copy a deck and try it. And there's a certain layer of, of fun to that. And that's totally cool if you're just trying to have a good time and not take it too seriously. But if you really want to improve with a deck, you definitely have to play it for a bit, guys. You have to learn it against different archetypes, against different matches, and then you'll start to, to learn kind of the more nuances of the deck. And if a deck still gives you issues, you can sub in a card. To, let's say you're playing a Hog Cycle deck and uh, and Royal Giant's killing you every time. We'll sub in that mini P.E.K.K.A. for the Ice Golem or whatever, right? You can make substitutions, but don't just switch the deck. Don't just throw the deck away if you want to really give it a try. So that would be my uh, number, my mistake number three. Number Number four is playing too aggressively on defense. Whoa. We always talk about playing too aggressively on offense, but playing too aggressively on defense personally was a big issue that took me a while to identify in my gameplay because it's not as apparent. Even watching a replay, sometimes it's really tricky to pick out that someone's playing too defensively because it just seems like they're playing good defense. It doesn't seem like, oh, that's where they're going wrong. And that's what I was doing wrong for a long time. It took me to it, it took me to the point even this year to finally realize this and and how i realized it was i was playing a lot of bridge spam decks for a while and i started to notice that as a bridge spam player i would just wait for someone to overcommit to play that one extra three or four elixir card on defense and then boom i would try to make them punish i would try to punish them in the opposite lane now even if you're not playing bridge spam you're gonna wanna have a very, very kind of keen awareness of what cards do I need to use here defensively. And you don't wanna just spam all your defensive cards at once uh, unless it's absolutely necessary, right? And it doesn't mean you don't defend. It doesn't mean you're playing everything like a beatdown deck, but just be very cognizant, be very aware of what the opponent is trying to make you do defensively and don't play into what they're trying to make you do. So again, if they're coming at you with a couple troops, maybe six elixir worth of troops in one lane, don't defend with like eight or ten elixir just hoping for the counter push because they could punish you in the opposite lane or they could bank that elixir trade plus four elixir and then cash in on it three four five six plays later in the match and you'll never know exactly what went wrong it's because you overcommitted on defense it's a big one and then number five the final kind of mistake or tip for you guys is going to be 
a pretty obvious one. It's do not play when tilted. And and it's not just because you play worse when you're tilting. It's not because you play worse, because you do. Most players do play worse when you're tilting, and it's almost a subconscious thing. You don't even realize it, but you play a little bit more aggressive. You know, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. You ever have like three or four losses, and then you start making opening like a bandit at the bridge plays. They're very subtle, right? Like normally you wouldn't probably play a bandit at the bridge, but you lose three in a row, maybe you'll play that bandit at the bridge start of the match, just because you're, you're frustrated. You're playing a little bit more aggressive, you probably don't even realize it. So that's number one why you shouldn't play when tilting. But number two is if you're anything like me, guys, it puts me kind of in a real life bad mood. And it's temporary. It's not like it ruins my day or anything. It doesn't even ruin my hour. It just ruins where I'm at mentally in the moment. Like there's been many times where I've kind of, you know, gotten a little snappy with like a friend or a family member when I'm in literally in a tilt, you know, like playing and I'm not, I'm not a rage player. I don't throw my device. I don't like scream or anything like that, but I do kind of just get in a little bit of a bad mood and nobody wants to get in a bad mood over a mobile game and your family and friends definitely don't want you to be in a bad mood over a mobile game. So that's something that I wish I could go back and tell myself, hey man, I'm gonna cut you off three losses in a row or two losses, whatever it is for you, 10 losses in a row. Do not play anymore. Put your device away, take a break. Come back later on, you'll probably go on a win streak, you know? So guys, <laughs> that is the video. It was a little bit a different, like I said, but hopefully it kind of, you know, I don't know, shared a thing or two about my mistakes with you guys and hopefully one or two of these tips kind of resonated with you guys as well. So thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to Bren Chong. Hope you enjoyed this gameplay, this mediocre CWA gameplay in the background. Uh, did you like that first match? How about that guy BMing me? He was BMing pretty hard and I had the comeback victory against Lava Loon. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, that was a good match. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. I really appreciate it. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you. And as always, take care, guys.